proportion skills practice. We're just going to go through, solve some proportions, set up some proportions, and make a lot of magic happen. So when you just have a straight-up proportion, remember, we're going to cross-multiply to solve these. So when I cross-multiply, that means 3 times x is 3x. 15 times 7 gives me 105. So I need to divide by the number on both, both sides of the sign, divide by the number in front of x. So x equals 35. And the second one I cross multiply and I get 36 equals 2x. Divide by 2, x is 18. Decimals get played with the same way. So 2.5x equals 126. I'm going to divide both sides again by the number in front of the x so that it cancels out and I'm simply left with 50.4. In number four, now when I see 50,000, I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite that as 50,000 because I think that might be just a little bit easier. And then when I cross multiply, I get 50,000x equals 2,700. I'm going to divide both sides by the 50,000 because that's what's in front of x, and I end up with 0 0.054. Uh, directions did say rounded two decimal places, so I would go 0 0.0. Five for my final rounded answer. In number five, now when I see million and billion, I'm going to go ahead and um, change those to scientific notation. Well, kind of. So I have x over three equals, I'm going to keep the 25.8, I'm just going to say million is times 10 to the sixth, and billion is times 10 to the ninth. That's at least going to make my math a little bit easier to work with. So now when I cross multiply, I end up with six times 10 to the ninth, times my x value equals, uh, when I take 3 times 25.8, I get 77.4 times 10 to the 6th. Now I'm going to divide by the 6 times 10 to the 9th. That makes these go away. So over here I have 6 times 10 to the 9th. When I do that, I end up with 12.9 times 10 to the negative 3. Remember, 6 minus 9 is negative 3. That answer is not acceptable. It is not in scientific notation. So 12.9, 12 is greater than 10. So when I, my exponent's going to get bigger. So I'm going to move it one place. I'm going to add one. So my final answer here is 1.29 times 10 to the negative second because negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And number 6, again, I see these uh, words. I'm going to change the words. So I'm going to have 3.1. 1,000 means 3 over 1.5 times 10 to the 4th. And million means six. Now you can. I don't. T I don't do that in any of my videos. But you could reduce these first if you wanted to. Um, that just adds extra steps. If you feel comfortable multiplying and dividing um, by scientific notation, I don't. I don't know that it matters. Uh, it's up to you entirely. Obviously, it's your world. I'm just living in it. But when I cross multiply here, I get 1.5 times 10 to the fourth times x equals, and when I go the other direction, 3.1 uh, times 0.5, that's going to give me 1.55 times 10 to the ninth. I'm going to divide by the number in front of x, which is 1.5 times 10 to the fourth. That makes this go away. So I now have x equals, when I take 1.55 divided by 1.5, I get approximately 1.03 times 10 to the 9 minus 4 is 5. And that is uh, scientific notation, so I can go ahead and quit there. All right, let's get to some story problems. Number seven, a scientist dissolved six pounds of chemicals in 22 gallons of water. I'm talking about pounds to gallons. So let me change colors here so it's easier to read. Uh, so six pounds, 22 gallons of water. And then it says, how many pounds, well, how pounds goes on top, how many pounds um, should be dissolved in 24 gallons of water to obtain the same concentration. That means, you know, it's proportional. Okay, so I cross multiply. 22x equals 6 times 24 is 144. I'm going to divide both sides by the 22, and I'm going to get approximately 6.55 pounds of chemicals to keep that same concentration. And it makes sense it should be bigger, right? 22 to 24 got bigger. 6, it should get slightly bigger. Number eight, the ratio of women to men at a local college. Okay, women to men is six to seven. If there are 1,400 women, 
1,400 women, how many total students are there? Oh man, it says total students. Well, that's okay. If I figure out the men and then add men and women, I'm good. So I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to say 6x equals 9,800. Divide both sides by 6 and I'm going to get approximately 1,633 men. So if I take women plus men, there are approximately 3,033 total students at this campus or at this college. Number nine, the line at the Millennium Force at Cedar Point is moving at a rate of five feet, five feet for 20 seconds. At this rate, how long, that's time, will it take for somebody at the back of the line to move 422 feet? Okay, so when I cross multiply, I get 5x equals 8,440. I divide both sides by 5, and I end up with an answer of 1,688 seconds. Now, I'm sorry, that doesn't mean anything to me, but I know there are 60 seconds in a minute. So if I divide this by 60, that'll put me into minutes, and the answer is 28.13 minutes. That's why I don't like to go to Cedar Point. I don't like to wait for a half hour to, to ride a ride. That just, it's not fun for me. And let's face it, I'm a weenie. I don't like roller coasters. Okay, number 10. According to the U.S. Census, Valpo has some square miles and a population. So square miles and a population. So for Valpo, let's just write down what we have. 15.53 square miles, population of 31,000, that's a 730. Okay, if the population per square mile of Valpo were proportional to the population per square mile of Indy, what would have been the population of Indianapolis, populations on the bottom in my ratio, if they occupy 361.43 square miles. This is why I start with words, because I want to make sure I have the things in the right order, right? Put them in the right spots. So I cross multiply, and I get 15.53x equals 11468173.9. I divide by the number in front of x, and I end up with 738,400, that's an ugly looking four, 453 people. Um, I rounded the nearest person because, again, we're talking about people. You can't have a partial person. Well, I guess you can, but it just doesn't make sense. All right, number 11. According to the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, there were 1,356 ride-related injuries. From Okay, so somehow we're talking about injuries, and there are 1,356 of them. That same year, People took this many rides, and that was 1.38 times 10 to the ninth, because it says billions. So injuries related to rides. Okay, now, if all 6.57 million residents in Indiana went on a ride, how many rides would have resulted in injury? Okay, so you're trying to find how many injuries if we have 6.57 million. Million means six. Okay, so when I cross multiply, I end up with, I'm going to go this way first, 1.38 times 10 to the ninth times x equals, I go this direction, and when I multiply 1,356 by 6.57, I get 8908.92 times 10 to the sixth. I'm going to divide by the number in front of x, which so it's 1.38 times 10 to the ninth. So, when I, pick a new color, when I divide these two, I get 6,455.7 times 10 to the 6 minus 9 is negative 3. Now I need to change this to standard form because you can't, I mean, this just doesn't make sense. Negative 3 gets smaller. 1, 2, 3. So approximately 6 rides will result in injury if all 6.57 million residents take a ride. Only six of them will result in injury. Maybe six and a half, but again, how do you have half of a ride? Number 12. Okay, we are now going to compare U.S. to Costa Rica. Okay, so in prison population, right, this is from lesson four. If the prison population per capita rate in the U.S. were proportional to the prison population per capita rate of Costa Rica, and here it tells you what the population of Costa Rica is, what would have been the expected prison population in Costa Rica? Okay, so Costa Rica, U.S., that's who we're talking about, and we're talking about the prison 
over the total population. Okay, now we're trying to find the Costa Rica prison population. Everybody else we know. Now, population here is in millions, population here is in millions. So I don't need to actually write millions anywhere because the word million would just cancel out. So for Costa Rica, I have 4.516, and for the U.S., I have 308.4. So now the U.S. was the prison population, 2,292,133. And now I officially have uh, my proportion set up. So I can cross multiply. 308.4x equals go this direction, and I get 103512.72.63. All right. Divide both sides by the number in front of x, which is the 308.4. Divide this by 308.4. And if my math is correct, you should end up with 33,564. That's the prison population of Costa Rica if they were proportional to that of the U.S. Let's do one more. Now, this one's a little bit trickier. So, before we even get into this, we're talking about the prison population, Iraq to Canada. Okay? So, we're talking about Iraq to Canada. I know I forgot an A there. Now, we're going to do prison on top, just like we did in the last problem, population on the bottom. But you'll notice the population for Canada is given like a this. The population of Iraq is given in millions. Now, million means six. So for Canada's population, if I just move the decimal over six places, 34.108752 would be in millions because million means six. So if I move it six places, now I'm in millions. Now I can set it up without uh, changing the... Or for Iraqis, you could move... Uh, for the Iraqis, you could otherwise add six decimal places to this. So for my for me, or my problem here, we're trying to find out the prison population of Canada. So for Iraq, I've got 31,645 over the population of 31.3. How many in Canada if I have 34.108752 people? All right, so again, my proportion... 31.3 equals 34.108752. Shoot, that goes on the bottom. My bad. X over 34.108752. So when I cross multiply, I get 31.3X equals super big number 1079371.457. Now, when I first did this, I'll be honest, I forgot to change the Canadian population to millions, and my answer was outrageous. And so that's how I, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't change it to millions first. So, I mean, you can always use your common sense to make sure that your answer makes sense. Now, when I divide by the number in front of X, I end up with, to the nearest person, 34,485. So, uh, and this makes sense, right? Canada's got a slightly larger population than Iraq, so their prison population, if they were proportional, should also just be a little bit bigger. And that is the end of playing with proportions and skills practice.